Poland. And Shaq shoves! OMG ICM suicide. Three way to the flop, which gives Vanessa top pair second pair for Dan Shaq plus a flush draw plus a backdoor straight draw. Oh boy, this could get uglier than Quato from Total Recall. Well, it doesn't look like Vanessa intends to play in flow. She leads for 165,000. To just call pre-flop from the small blind and then lead here, Vanessa's range is rarely nothing. Four hundred. Dan Shack raises to four hundred thousand, gets an insta fold from Antonio Esfandiari. This board is super wet, which is gonna make Vanessa not worry so much about sets and two pairs. If Dan had a super monster and Vanessa led into him, wouldn't he probably just call and let her lead again on the turn? It's free money. So no, I don't see Vanessa folding top pair top kicker here. Call. She calls. There is now 1.25 million in the middle. Huge pot building here on the bubble, and there are three guys at the table running on vapor. The board pairs on the turn. Vanessa now a three to one favorite. She checks. All in. And Shaq shoves! OMG ICM suicide. I commend Dan Shaq for having stones so big. They are now considered the islands of the Bahamas, but this bluff is risking crazy amounts of real money against a person with a stupid strong range. I call. Vanessa calls! And Dan Shaq is at risk of bubbling the super high roller. What a ridiculous sweat. What an unnecessarily huge pot. Dan Shaq does have 11 outs. He can hit a club or a 10 on the river. It's a 10! That was not supposed to happen. He's doing a victory lap. He's coming back. Dan Shack doubles up and takes the chip lead from Vanessa Selbst. I just didn't think you up. Dan, don't say anything. Don't. Not too late. I just lost like two million chips. I lost two million chips. Dan got me on the river, yeah. He, he pushed on the turn and I called and he had 11 outs. Yeah. I just lost two million chips. No. He raised and then he just jammed on a bluff, or like a semi-bluff, and I called him. And he got there. That's the crucial part of the story, Miranda. He got there. How does Vanessa always find herself in these situations on TV tables? Particularly brutal for her, not so much because she might bubble now, but because she was in such a great spot to win this tournament. Nice hand, Shaq. No. <laughs> Bad hand. Hard to make it fair, hard to make it fair in a plus show, whatever. I'm trying to win. I understand. Action is on Sam Rodriguez. He has eights under the gun. I like to call him Snowman because I'm hilarious. Looks like a raise to 185,000. Yoni Okuminen has Jack-7 suited. Say what you will about Sam Rodriguez, but the perception at this table is that he can be outplayed. Hence why Yanni might raise with these suited connectors. Could you hear the air quotes when I said connectors? Just about. It is a three bet to 405,000. Jack two for Mikolai Pabal. That goes in the muck. Not connectors, no air quotes. Anton's had enough. Peace out. Like Barovis gives up the small blind. And with 5-9 off suit, Hillary will fold his big blind. So back on Rodriguez. Sam's all four not being pushed around. I like that. He calls the race. And these two will see a flop. And I think one of the biggest mistakes you can make is trying to bluff an inexperienced guy. These pros have yet to learn that with Sam. Wow, what a flop. Speaking of sick coolers. A set for Rodriguez, Jokaminen with a flush draw. Rodriguez checks, Jokaminen was the pre-flop aggressor. Looks like he'll continue. Based on this bloated three bat pot and the two characters we're dealing with, you can probably see where this is going. Jokaminen bets 335,000. I'm all for betting here, especially knowing what the hands are. You get value and protection. 
Rodriguez check raises to 800,000. That's a pretty small check raise, and it's something Yanni might think Sam is capable of doing with his bluffs. He also knows that even if Sam isn't bluffing, he's probably not drawing dead. This is actually one of the worst case scenarios, and he's still got 28% equity. All in. Call in. Call. An all in and a call. Rodriguez is ahead, but doesn't like what he sees. He knows he has to fade spades. Yanni might have thought he could outplay Senor Rodriguez, but it's pretty tough to outplay a guy who's flop middle set. If his hand holds up, he'll knock out Yakuminen and have a loco chip lead. Seven of clubs on the turn. Yakuminen has eight outs. He needs to see a spade on the river. And the river is a spade! That was unfortunate, or fortunate, depending on whether or not you speak Spanish or like seeing the best hand win. Devastating blow to Rodriguez's chip stack. 7-8 for Sam Rodriguez on the button. Sam might feel compelled to raise on the button, but he doesn't have to get involved with his stack. He does raise, makes it 225,000. Nine six suited for Yoni Yokominen. Looks like Yanni may have caught on to the fact that Sam might be tilted and that he plays too many hands. Yokominen. Getting aggro again. The perfect three bet. 480,000. Gets a fold from Pobal in the big blind. Not my favorite spot, Pri, but not the worst. Call. Rodriguez will call and play the flop in position. Another dramatic flop. I meant to say I love that spot pre-flop. Two pair for Rodriguez, the up and down draw for Jokominen. You'd expect Yanni to continue here, yet another cooler. All in. Oh. Jokominen practically put Rodriguez all in. All in. Doesn't want to see a five. Pada, pada. The sick Finns think it's going to come spade, spade. That would be sick. Well, there is a spade on the turn. No, no. Tiene más outs ahora. More outs now. That turn card's got more sweat than Rocky Four. The Spanish don't want to see a five, a ten, or a spade on the river. Rodriguez is at risk. No, 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 no. And with a spade on the river, he's out. Gross. Los Yento. <laughs> Sam definitely wasn't the most experienced player at the table, but he did get pretty unlucky in a few key pots. We'll raise small to big with King-10. Siva in the big blind with King-Jack. Nick out of position and dominated. Siva calls. Both hands a little under repped at this point. And it's a King-High flop. This could be a disaster. Nick Shulman should continue. He does bet 180,000. These hands are absolute monsters shorthanded. And it looks like Scott is going to raise, believing he can get action from worse, and he is right. Remember, those green chips are 25,000 each, so that's a raise to 425,000. No way Shulman can get away from this, but does he lose it all? He is counting out a re-raise. Shulman three bets to 775,000. He's three betting really small to induce. Big mistake, Scott's not folding either. Come on in. Scott Come on. shoves. Call. Cool. And cool. Shulman calls. And we are about to lose Nick Shulman in the exact same spot he went out in in 2011. He only has two outs. Meanwhile, Scott Seaver is on the verge of winning a pot of more than 3.6 million and drawing practically even with Doc Sands. A deuce on the turn. Shulman down to 5% equity, about to make the walk of shame. A 10 on the river saves him! No problem, okay. A two-outer saves Nick Shulman. That is just brutal. It's never easy. Nick Shulman is way too lucky to be a Cleveland fan. Now it's he and Scott that are nearly even in chips.